In this video, we're going to take a look at scatter plots and correlation. A scatter plot is a graphical display of data that is sets of quantitative values, typically in groups of two. So looking at my table to the right, I have a column of age and a column of reading level. And what it's important, what's important to understand is six and 1.3 are related to one another. So this particular subject has an age of six and a reading level of 1.3, which means three tenths of the way through first grade. And again, it's important to understand that they have to be related and they have to be quantitative. So we're looking at numbers and we're looking at dependent data. Now of the data, obviously there are two variables. One of them we're going to call the explanatory variable and the other is the resp response variable. You might also see them called independent and dependent. And it's very important to determine which is which. Now typically that relationship is going to be very easy to us. So for instance, with this particular example, age and reading level, would it make more sense to say that someone's age is based on their reading level or someone's reading level is based on their age? So if I said, hey, you've got a reading level of 4.1, I bet that makes you 11 or 12 or 10. Or is it more likely that I say, hey, you have an age of eight and I'm guessing then based on your age, your reading level is four. So again, it would make more sense that as age changes, the changes will occur to the reading level. So that means age is the explanatory variable because it explains the changes in reading level. The response variable is reading level because we can say that the changes in reading level are a response to changes in age. So at the bottom of the page, I have created a scatter plot for you of the data we just looked at in table form. And before we talk about the information on this page, I just want to point out to you how the scatter plot is made because it's very important. And I will show you how to do this in Excel. But it's important to understand that on the x axis, that's this guy, for those of you who don't love math so much, on the x axis, we're always going to put the explanatory variable. And on the y-axis, which is this one, we're always going to put the response variable. And again, each of these dots then represents one pair of data. So one of the things that we're looking for as we look at um, scatter plots is what is the relationship between the data? Is there a relationship between the data? Now, there's a lot of different um, shapes that data can take on. We are going to be focusing on linear regression. So we're interested in, do the data in general form a line? And if so, in general, as X increases, so as the explanatory variable increases, as I move to the right on the X axis, what's happening to Y? So in our case of reading level by age, obviously Y is increasing because this value is under two, this value is over two, this value is almost four, this value is four, this value is about five. We get the idea that as we move to the right, the data are increasing and that means it's a positive correlation. If, however, we graphed it and they were decreasing, that would be a negative correlation. And sometimes you're going to end up with a scatter plot that looks more like this. And we can see that there's really no linear correlation at all. And in fact, you could even find something that looks like this. And we can say there's clearly a correlation there because it's making a parabola but it doesn't make a straight line and therefore it's not a linear correlation. 
we're often able to determine the kind of relationship that two quantitative variables should have. So we're going to look at a few scenarios here and we're going to talk about, first of all, which one is explanatory and which is response, and also what would we expect to see with the relationship. For instance, the number of hours you study for an exam and the score you make on the exam. So first of all, if I were going to graph that, it would make more sense that the number of hours that I study would affect the score that I make. So this guy is going to be explanatory, and this guy is going to be response. Now, the question is, as the number of hours I study increases, so we're always going to think about explanatory increasing and then say what happens to the response. So as I increase the number of hours that I study, what should happen to the score I make on the exam? And again, we can reason through and say it should be that the number of hours that I study, as that number increases, I'm going to do better and better on the exam. So this should have a positive slope. Next, the number of miles on the odometer of a used car and its price. So again, which one explains which? Does the price, as the price changes, should the odometer miles change? No. As the number of miles change, the price of the car will change. So as the number of miles increases on the odometer, what should happen to the price of the car? Well, as you have more and more miles, the car is going to be worth less and less. I should have written response next to this one. And so therefore, as explanatory increases, price decreases, that is considered a negative slope. Um, one thing I do want to point out is I am focusing on the explanatory increasing. For a positive slope, I should also note that as the number of hours decrease, the score I make on the exam decreases. So for a positive slope, both signs will be the same. Whereas for a negative slope, both signs should be different. So as the number of miles decrease, I will have to pay more for each for the car. All right, let's look at C, the pressure on a gas pedal and the speed of the car. Again, it makes far more sense that the more or less pressure that I put on the gas pedal will affect the speed of the car. So this guy's explanatory. And then the speed of the car is response. And then the question is, as I put more pressure on the gas pedal, what's going to happen to the speed of the car? Well, unless your car is broken, that should increase the speed of the car. And therefore, this is a positive correlation. Last one, shoe size and IQ for adults. So which one affects which one? Well, when you get to one like this, where it doesn't seem that they affect one another, there really is no right answer for explanatory and response. So you kind of just get to choose which one is which. And again, shoe size, let's just call shoe size the explanatory and IQ the response. And again, we're looking at four adults. And the reason they do that is because we don't want to look at shoe size for children and their IQ because their IQ is probably changing quite a bit. So we're looking at adults where their IQ is fairly set. So shoe size and IQ. As my shoe size increases, should I be smarter? Or as my shoe size increases, should I be less intelligent? Or does one have nothing to do with another? And that's what we're looking at here. This should be no linear correlation. So it doesn't make sense that as one increases, the other would increase or decrease. We have no idea because we don't have a relationship that is known between those two variables. So that gives us the direction of correlation, which is positive, negative, or no correlation. But now let's focus on how strong that relationship is. So for instance, I could have a scatter plot that looks like this. 
That's a scatter plot with a very strong positive correlation. So it's positive because as I move to the right, it is going up. So just like a normal algebraic equation, that would have a positive slope. Now, let's make another scatter plot. Does this also have a positive correlation? Yes, it does. Is it as strong as the first? No, it's not. Because for the first one, I could essentially take a line and connect all of the dots almost perfectly. Whereas the second one, I don't know. Do I put a line up here? Okay, do I put a line down here? And that's what we're going to talk about later is how do we create that line? But again, the first one, I can almost hit every single um, ordered pair with my lines. That's very strong. Now, how do we measure strength? We measure strength by something called the Pearson correlation coefficient, which is rho. So it's a Greek letter rho and it measures the strength of the linear relationship. So again, we're all about linear equations. So the linear relationship between two quantitative variables in a population. Now, quite often, we're going to be looking at a sample. And if we're looking at a sample, we use R instead of rho. It's important to understand that the value of the Pearson correlation coefficient always takes on the value between negative one and positive one inclusive. And of course, this is just how we write that mathematically, that R is between negative one and positive one. Now, as you can see, this is a very crazy equation, but don't worry, there's actually just an Excel function that will calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient for you. Now, what I do wanna point out is what I mean, because I kind of skipped over it and I apologize, what I mean by this. Negative one would be a perfect linear relationship going in the negative direction. So all of the dots would fall exactly on this line. This would be R equals negative one. The first picture that I drew is an R of positive one. It's a perfect correlation that is positive. Now, as I get closer to zero, an R value of zero might look like this. We have no idea if it's positive or negative. So essentially, as we get closer to negative one and closer to positive one, the stronger that relationship is. Whereas say this other relationship that I have, this might be 0.86 or something like that. So as we can see, it's still a positive correlation. It's just not as strong as the first one. And this one is a negative correlation and it is um, obviously a negative slope. So we don't know too much yet about linear regression, but I do want to go ahead and show you in Excel how to do everything that we've talked about so far. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to select just the quantitative values. So if, for instance, I had another column over here and it had students' names or something like that, and then I tried to create a scatter plot from that, by selecting all of the data and go to insert scatter plot. I want you to notice it's going to give me two different lines of data and that's not what I want. I want to see how does six relate to 1.3. I do not want to graph six and 1.3 for A and seven and 2.2 for B. So just make sure as you are doing this, if there is a column that's non-quantitative, you have to have quantitative values, don't select it. So I can either delete it or I can just choose these two quantitative columns. The other thing I want to point out to you is that the first column should be your explanatory variable and your second column should be your response variable. So if they're not already in that order, it's best to put them in that order. Then I'm going to select 
And I'm going to go to insert the one that looks like a scatter plot. And I just want that first one. So I just want the scatter plot. I don't want anything else. So this is the scatter plot that displays my data for age and reading level. Now, obviously I can double click on that title and change it reading level by age. I can include other items. So one way to do that is just to click on that. Let me get rid of that and click the plus. So I can add chart elements that way. I can also add chart elements over here. This one's a little bit stronger. There's more things that you can do. But if I just quickly click on that plus, I can click on axis titles and it's going to add both of them. I can add data labels, but I typically don't. I find them annoying. You can add a legend, but it doesn't make sense if you just have one set of data to add a legend. And I can add a trend line, um, but I'm actually going to you can go to more options. So more options is a good thing to do. The other way to add it is to go up here to add chart element, trend line, and then go to more options. So you're going to need the more options. So if I just wanted the scatter plot, I wouldn't need the trend line. I could be done right there, um, changing the title to reading level and the axis title to age. And if I said, if I were asked to create a scatter plot, I'd be all done. I do want to point out a couple of things that you will be asked to do and go ahead and do them here, even though we haven't really talked about either of them yet. So it's sort of a preview. I can go again to that trend line, but I need to go to the more options. Now I could click linear, um, but I want more options. So I'm going to click on linear here but then I'm also going to display the equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. And this equation doesn't make sense to us yet, but it will. But notice I'm able to display them on the chart. And then later when we talk about them, you'll see why it might be advantageous for us to display those on the chart. And notice you can move that box around. So if you have it somewhere here where it's difficult to read, it's okay to move it somewhere where it's not so difficult to read. Now the other thing that we have talked about, so again we haven't talked about the equation or R squared and what those mean, and we haven't talked about how to create this line, but I wanted to show you how to do that in Excel anyway. We have talked about R, the Pearson Correlation Coefficient, and in order to calculate that I can use one of two and they actually give me the same value. C-O-R-R-E-L returns the correlation coefficient between two data sets. And notice it asks for an array. So I'm going to take the entire column and then the entire column. And that gives me my correlation coefficient. Now notice this is a very strong value. And we talked about how the closer you get to one, the stronger the relationship. And we know that these data do fall very closely to a straight line. And that makes sense that I would have a value that's very close to positive one since it's a positive relationship. The other function that I can use is Pearson. Obviously we're finding a Pearson correlation coefficient. So B comma C, I'm sorry, B colon B comma C colon C, which is the same thing that I did here. So this is Coral, this is Pearson. Notice they gave me the exact same information. So that's all we need to know for now in Excel. And coming up, we're going to take a look at whether or not the relationship between two variables is significant. As I said, up next, we're going to take a look at determining statistical significance for the Pearson correlation coefficient.